In this video, let's understand the glomerular filtration rate. What is it that we are going to learn? We will understand the definition, the normal value of the GFR and the difficult part, the regulation. So let's begin with the definition and the normal value. In this diagram, what we are seeing here, this is the glomerular capillary. This is called as the Bowman's capsule. So what is happening is the plasma, which is present in the glomerular capillary, it is undergoing a process of ultra filtration and it is going to enter into the Bowman's capsule. And remember that this is the first step to occur in the urine formation. So what is glomerular filtration rate? It is the amount of filtrate which is formed by both the kidneys in per unit time. How much is the amount of filtrate which is formed by both the kidneys in per unit time? So what is the normal value? The normal value is 125 ml of ultra filtrate is formed each minute. And if I have to write it per day, this value comes to 180 liters per day. So this is the normal value and the definition of GFR. Next, let's understand the regulation. The regulation depends on two important factors. The first is the balance of the hydrostatic and the colloidal osmotic forces, or I also call it as the pressures, acting across the capillary membrane. Second is the capillary filtration coefficient, which is represented as Kf. Now, this capillary filtration coefficient in turn is dependent on two factors. One is capillary permeability. Another one is the filtering surface area. So if the filtering surface area is more or if the capillary permeability is more, what is going to happen to the capillary filtration coefficient? This causes an increase in the capillary filtration coefficient. So if the capillary filtration coefficient is more, indirectly that is causing an increase in the GFR. So one factor is our filtering surface area. The second factor is the capillary permeability. And the third factor is the balance of this hydrostatic and the colloidal osmotic pressures which are acting across the capillary membrane, which is given by what is called as the net filtration pressure. That's why I can say that GFR is equal to capillary filtration coefficient multiplied by the net filtration pressure. Now remember that this net filtration pressure is the third factor regulating the GFR and it is in turn dependent on four important pressures. So what are these four important pressures? The first one is the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. The second one is the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure. The third one is the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus. The last one is the colloidal osmotic pressure in the Bowman's capsule. Okay, these are the four pressures which determine the net filtration pressure and in this we should remember that the glomerular hydrostatic pressure and the colloidal osmotic pressure, both of them, they are going to favor the filtration, they are going to favor the filtration, whereas the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure and the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus is going to cause a reduction in the filtration. So these force forces are acting in a positive way, this is acting in a negative way and the Entire these four forces, they are going to give us what is called as a net filtration pressure. The fourth factor is the role of the sympathetic nervous system. What happens when I stimulate the sympathetic nervous system to the GFR? And the fifth factor is that there are some hormones which can also either increase or decrease the GFR. So these are the five factors which we are going to study. So let's start with the filtering surface area. Remember that the filtering surface area is going to depend on the size of these cells which are called as the mesangial cells. So whenever there is contraction of the mesangial cells that is going to reduce the filtering surface area. Whenever there is relaxation of the mesangial cell that is going to increase the filtering surface area. So when there is a reduction in the filtering surface area what is going to happen to the KF? The KF is going to reduce. So so when the KF is reducing, what is going to happen to the GFR? The GFR is also going to reduce. So reduction in the filtering surface area is going to cause a reduction in the glomerular filtration rate. That means whenever there is contraction of the mesangial cells, that reduces the GFR. And whenever there is relaxation of the mesangial cells, which increases the filtering surface area, that is going to increase the GFR. Okay. There are some things which cause contraction of the mesangial cells and relaxation of the mesangial cells. For example, endothelins, angiotensin 2, vasopressin and norepinephrine. These are the four which we, we are supposed to write in the exam and remember. All these they cause contraction of the mesangial cells thus causing a reduction of the GFR. Whereas atrial natriuretic peptide, dopamine, prostaglandin E2 and cyclic AMP, all these are going to cause relaxation of the mesangial cells Hence, they are going to cause an increase in the GFR. Okay, so this is regarding the first factor, which is the filtering surface area. Coming to the second factor, the second factor is what is called as the capillary permeability. In order to understand the capillary permeability, briefly, we also have to understand regarding the glomerular capillary membrane. Remember that the glomerular capillary membrane is having three layers. So what are these layers? 
The first layer is this one, which is the endothelial cells of the capillaries. The second layer is this one, that is the basement membrane of the capillaries. And then there is a third layer, which is nothing but these are the cells which are present or lining the Bowman's capsule. These are called as the podocytes and these podocytes have foot-like processes. So these are the three layers, the endothelium of the capillaries, the basement membrane of the capillaries and the foot processes of the podocytes. What we can make from this glomerular capillary membrane is that this glomerular capillary membrane is highly porous. That is why it is allowing 180 liters of fluid to be filtered in each day. Now, what is the reason behind this porosity of the glomerular capillary membrane? One reason is that there is a lot of gap between the endothelial cells of the capillary and these gaps are what are called as fenestrae. Second reason is that the basement membrane is made out of collagen and proteoglycans and even this collagen and proteoglycans also have large spaces and the third reason is these foot-like processes in between these foot-like processes we are seeing what is called as slit-like pores so here also the basement membrane is porous because of this reason there is a large amount of filtration occurring across this capillary membrane or also called as a glomerular capillary membrane but remember that glomerular capillary membrane is also selective it is also selective we will understand how it is selective okay so the first thing under the glomerular permeability or under the capillary permeability is that the filtrability of the solutes is inversely related to the size of the particle like for example the water's molecular weight is 18 and its filtrability is 1 that means it is easily and completely filtered sodium is 23 even it's also 1 glucose is 180 it's also 1 inulin being a higher molecular weight even then it is easily filtrable but when it goes above this for example like myoglobin whose molecular weight is 70,000 the filtrability is going to reduce 1 means easily filtered 0.75 means it is less filtered now what is happening to the albumin's molecular weight albumin's molecular weight is 69000 and here we can see that the filtrability of the albumin is grossly reduced so one factor which uh, tells me as to uh, which substance is going to pass through the capillary glomerular membrane and which is not going to pass is the molecular weight now more important than the molecular weight is the charge which is present on the surface of that particular molecule so the negatively charged particles or the molecules they are filtered less easily one very good example i will give you here is that the pore size of the glomerular membrane is 8 nanometer whereas the molecular diameter of the albumin is 6 nanometer even then it is not filtered why because of the negative charge so the endothelial cells of the capillaries are negatively charged the collagen and the proteoglycans which are forming the basement membrane are also negatively charged even the foot processes of the podocytes are also negatively charged so proteins in general are also negatively charged so the proteins which are negatively charged and they will be repelled by the negative charges which are present on the endothelial cells basement membrane as well as the foot processes hence the proteins are not filtered so one very nice graph is given in the guidon wherein he says there are three dextrans one is a polycationic another one is a neutral another one is a polyanionic and he says that the polyanionic dextran all three are dextrans but this is a polyanionic dextran you can see that the relative filtrability of the polyanionic dextran is very less compared to the filtrability of the polycationic dextran so one of the important factor which determines permeability across the glomerular capillary membrane is the charge which is present on the particles so this is our second factor coming to the third factor and one of the most important factor is the balance between the hydrostatic and the colloidal osmotic pressures so the net filtration pressure is dependent upon these four pressures which i have already mentioned glomerular hydrostatic pressure bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure colloidal osmotic pressure where in the glomerulus and the colloidal osmotic pressure in the bowman's capsule so now the gfr can be written as kf multiplied by all these values so we will see what these values are going to do as i have already told you that the glomerular hydrostatic pressure is going to favor the filtration the colloidal osmotic pressure in the bowman's capsule also favors the filtration whereas these two pressures that is the bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure as well as the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus they are going to inhibit the filtration okay so same thing is depicted here glomerular hydrostatic pressure is favoring filtration it is 60 mmhg glomerular colloidal osmotic pressure that is colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus it is inhibiting or it is negative movement it is inhibiting the filtration and even the bowman's capsule pressure okay bowman's capsule pressure means what it is 
it is the bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure this is nothing but our bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure even it is opposing the filtration but why here we haven't mentioned the colloidal osmotic pressure in the bowman's capsule because we know that the colloidal osmotic pressure is basically determined by the presence of the proteins and no protein is filtered across the glomerular capillary membrane hence the colloidal osmotic pressure in the bowman's capsule is literally zero that's why we are not taking this into the consideration and when we put up these values in this equation we will get that the net filtration pressure is plus 10 mm hg now because of that because the pressure is more in the glomerulus compared to the bowman's capsule that is why always the filtration is going to occur from the capillaries into the bowman's capsule now let's understand what are the factors which determine these different pressures so first let's talk about the glomerular hydrostatic pressure now remember that the glomerular hydrostatic pressure if it is increasing that is going to cause an increase in the gfr and if it is decreasing that is going to cause a decrease in the gfr now the glomerular hydrostatic pressure in turn is dependent upon three important parameters the first one is arterial pressure that is the pressure in the arteries second one is afferent arteriolar resistance so whether the afferent arteriole is going to constrict or is it going to dilate okay this is also one more factor third factor is efferent arteriolar resistance again whether the efferent arteriole is going to constrict or dilate okay so let's understand this this slide is extremely important whenever there is an increase in the arterial pressure that is going to cause an increase in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure which is going to cause an increase in the gfr okay this is the first thing second thing is regarding afferent arteriolar resistance so if there is an increase in the afferent arteriolar resistance which occurs whenever the afferent arteriole is constricted that point of time the glomerular hydrostatic pressure reduces hence reducing the gfr a extremely important point next is what is going to happen when the afferent arteriolar resistance decreases that means the afferent arteriole is now undergoing dilatation so when the afferent arteriole is undergoing dilatation at that point of time the glomerular hydrostatic pressure is going to increase thus increasing the gfr that means afferent arteriolar constriction is going to cause a reduction in the gfr and afferent arteriolar dilatation is going to cause an increase in the gfr now let's see what's happening with our efferent arteriole whenever there is a constriction of the efferent arteriole this is having a biphasic effect why like that because whenever there is a moderate constriction the gfr increases but whenever there is a severe constriction the gfr decreases what happens when there is dilatation of the efferent arteriole this is causing a reduction in the gfr please know this by heart because this is very important part of the regulation of the gfr next let's understand regarding the next pressure which is the hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman's capsule. So what is happening here? Whenever the Bowman's hydrostatic pressure is increasing, that is causing a reduction in the GFR. This we have already studied. Whenever there is a decrease in the Bowman's capsule hydrostatic pressure, that is causing an increase in the GFR. So one very important condition which increases the Bowman's hydrostatic pressure is obstruction of the urinary tract, which happens because of the kidney stones. That is why whenever there is a kidney stone, that causes an increase in the Bowman's hydrostatic pressure and whenever there is an increase in the Bowman's hydrostatic pressure that results in a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate extremely extremely important next is the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus remember that an increase in the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus is going to cause a decrease in the GFR okay so let's understand what is happening here the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus at the afferent end of the glomerulus is 28 mmHg and at the efferent end of the glomerulus it is 36 mmHg. So that means the average colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus varies between 28 to 36 mmHg. Now why is it that this is happening? So let's say this is the afferent end of the glomerulus and this is the efferent end of the glomerulus. So when the plasma is entering into the afferent end, I am telling you that the colloidal osmotic pressure here is 28. Now by the time the plasma is reaching the efferent end, the colloidal osmotic pressure is going to become 36 mmHg. Why is that occurring is because as the plasma is passing from the afferent end to the efferent end, filtration of the plasma is going to happen. So when the filtration of the plasma is going to happen, what is going to happen to the concentration of the proteins? When plasma is filtered, the proteins are not filtered. Proteins are going to stay back in the capillary so because of the filtration of the plasma the concentration of the protein is going to increase by the time the plasma has passed from the afferent to the efferent end of the glomerulus so because of the increase in the concentration of the proteins what is going to happen there is going to be an increase in the colloidal osmotic pressure that's why the colloidal osmotic pressure is less at the afferent end and it is high at the efferent end
okay so remember that the colloidal osmotic pressure which is present in the glomerulus it is also going to depend on two important factor one is arterial plasma colloidal osmotic pressure if the arterial plasma colloidal osmotic pressure is more what is going to happen it the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus also is going to be more so when the colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus is more that is going to cause a reduction in the gfr second important point or the thing on which the colloidal osmotic pressure of the glomerulus is going to depend and depend is the fraction of plasma which is filtered by the glomerular capillaries this is called as the filtration fraction this is nothing but how much fraction of the plasma is filtered how much is the amount of plasma filtered let's say more amount of plasma is filtered then the filtration fraction will be more so if more amount of plasma is filtered what is going to happen to the concentration of proteins even the concentration of proteins also is going to be more so when the amount of proteins in the plasma is more it is going to cause an increase in the colloidal osmotic pressure because of the increase in the colloidal osmotic pressure the gfr is going to be less so that means increase in the filtration fraction is going to cause a reduction in the gfr and the reason is already explained to you now the filtration fraction is calculated by this formula gfr divided by renal plasma flow so what can increase the gfr it can be in what can increase the filtration fraction in a reverse way it can be increased by increasing the gfr okay or it can be also increased by keeping the gfr constant and reducing the renal plasma flow no change in the gfr reduce the renal plasma flow i am going to increase the filtration fraction so that means whenever there is a reduction in the renal plasma flow what is happening to the filtration fraction the filtration fraction is increasing what happens to the colloidal osmotic pressure when the filtration fraction increases it is going to increase so if the colloidal osmotic pressure is increasing what is happening to the gfr the gfr is decreasing that means indirectly a reduction in the renal plasma flow is going to cause a reduction in the gfr and an increase in the renal plasma flow is going to cause an increase in the gfr the reason is already explained here next let's go to the fourth factor which is going to affect the GFR that is the effect of sympathetic stimulation all the blood vessels of the kidney are richly innervated by the sympathetic nerves and whenever there is sympathetic nerve stimulation it causes the constriction of the afferent arteriole so when there is constriction of the afferent arteriole what is happening to the renal blood flow the renal blood flow is reducing thus reducing the GFR so what is the effect of sympathetic stimulation whenever there is a sympathetic stimulation that is going to cause a reduction of GFR when is there sympathetic stimulation in the body it occurs during the defense reaction we all know that the sympathetic alarm gets activated when there is fight or flight response so that is a defense reaction when there is severe brain ischemia the cns ischemic response which you study in your blood pressure and whenever there is a severe hemorrhage which can lead to a hypovolemic shock it causes a simulation of the baroreceptors and that is going to cause the stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system so that means in a healthy resting person the sympathetic tone has no much influence on a, on the renal blood flow but as yes, it is having an influence during these conditions during the defense reaction during the brain ischemia during the severe hemorrhage so what is going to happen at that point of time there is going to be a reduction in the gfr and there will, there will be also a reduction in the urinary output of these patients and that is what is called as oliguria sometimes it can result in complete no urine output and that is what is called as anuria okay so this is the effect of the sympathetic stimulation last but not the least the fifth factor that is the hormonal influences so what are all the hormones which can influence the gfr first group is norepinephrine epinephrine and endothelin this is going to cause all these three they cause constriction of both the afferent as well as efferent arteriole thus reducing the renal blood flow renal blood flow is reduced the gfr is reduced second is angiotensin 2 what it does it preferentially constricts only the efferent arteriole so one one only the efferent arteriole is constricted what is going to happen that is going to cause an increase in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure that reduces the renal blood flow and that is going to cause a reduction in the gfr next is endothelial derived nitric oxide which causes vasodilatation and hence it reduces the renal vascular resistance that's why it's going to increase the gfr next we have prostaglandins and bradykinins which are going to increase the gfr so these are the five factors what are the five factors first one is what is called as the filtering surface area which is dependent on the mesangial cells second is the capillary permeability which is dependent upon the size as well as charge of the molecules the third one is net filtration pressure net filtration pressure in turn is dependent upon four pressures hydrostatic pressure in the glomerulus hydrostatic pressure in the bowman's capsule colloidal osmotic pressure in the glomerulus and the colloidal osmotic pressure in the bowman's capsule next is effect of sympathetic stimulation and the third one is effect of hormones remember gfr is expressed as kf multiplied by net 
filtration pressure. So that's it regarding the GFR. Thanks for listening. If you have any doubts, leave them in the comment section. Thanks a lot.